Hello, welcome to the course Transducers for Instrumentation. Today we will discuss about the radiation sensors. So as the name says radiation sensors, we are going to measure the radiation uh, which is happening from outside environment and we want to measure how much radiation is received using uh, some sensors. So as we know the radiation is nothing but the electromagnetic wave which is coming in and as the electromagnetic wave is nothing but the stream of photons. So we have photons which are high in energy. So when these photons strike or uh, interact with some other matter, they produce certain kind of effects on that matter. Uh, for example, uh, it ionizes certain gases or it kind of give out some electron hole pairs in semiconductor. So these kind of effects actually happens when a high energy photon strikes with certain media and this is what we want to measure how much ionization or how much how many photons are received in a particular cavity or in a particular volume and we want to convert that um, that quantity into a measurable electrical signal so this is what the radiation sensor actually does so uh, we are going to start today the radiation sensor so, radiation sensor there are three types of detectors that are uh, most commonly used. So, uh, before that radiation sensor is nothing but the sensors used to measure radiation. And there are three types of detectors which are mainly used. The first one is the gas filled detectors. The second is scintillators. And the third one is the solid state detectors. And these ga gas filled radiator detectors are further of three types.
the first one is ionization chamber the second is proportional counters and the third one is the geyser counter or geyser muller counter in short we call it gm as well so here we have radiation detectors which are of three types one is the gas filled detectors the other is scintillators and the third is the solid state detectors which are composed of for example some semiconductors like silicon based or some organic material based detectors those are those fall in the semiconductor or the solid state detectors the first one is gas filled detectors as the name says there is a gas filled in a cavity and we measure based on the property change of this gas so these gas filled detectors are further of uh, divided into three types one is the ionization chamber the second is proportional counters and the third is the gm detectors or gm counter or the geyser detector so these are of uh, three types gas filled detectors basically all these three work on the similar kind of principles but based on the applications and the voltage applied they differ in the functionality so we have uh, gas filled detectors which we are going to discuss first now so the first is gas filled detectors and as the name says when the gas in the detector comes in contact with radiation it reacts with the gas becoming ionized and the resulting electronic charge being measured by a meter
So here we have gas filled detectors where we have a cavity and in that cavity we place a certain gas along with two electrodes cathode and anode and we apply a voltage difference across these these two electrodes when a ionized ionization radiation comes in means the high energy photon comes in it reacts with the gas it it reacts with what the gas is filled in that cavity and when it reacts this ionizes the gas ionizes means the, it creates the charges in the gas filled in the cavity and because we have applied a potential difference this charge will be accumulated on these cathode and anode and that charge how much charge is developed by this ionization this can be measured using some electrical instrument like uh, a uh, ammeter or voltmeter so that charge we can measure which is proportional to how much radiation is coming and reacting with the gas so this is how this gas field detector works and as we uh, said there are three types one is the ionization chamber the second one is uh, the proportional counters and the third one is the gm counters so there are three types let's discuss the first one in detail so ionization chambers this works on the same principle but this operates at a low voltage and the measure measurement from the primary ions only so let's see the structure of these ionization chamber we have a cavity where we fill a gas so let's say this is a cylindrical cavity this is filled with a certain amount of gas and in this we place two electrodes let's say this is the electrode at the center and there's one electrode on the edge we call it anode and this is cathode and inside the cavity we have filled gas outside these electrodes are connected to the variable dc voltage source so we have a dc voltage source here it has two terminals the 
the other terminal we connect to anode through a meter or current meter or so so that we can measure how much charge is actually developed So this is a typical structure uh, of this gas field detector. We have this cavity filled with the gas and there is a DC voltage source where we apply a known DC voltage across anode and cathode. Now when the energetic particle comes from outside and passes through this cavity that is going to knock down the gas particles because of this it's high energy it breaks the these these uh, kind of uh, particles uh, the gas atoms it ionizes the gas and when the gas gets ionized because we are applying a certain dc voltage across anode and cathode they will move towards these electrodes based, based on the polarity if it is positive it goes to to the negative side so when this gas gets polarized one we assume that one photon give rise to one kind of pair of electron hole though it's not electron hole it's actually the gas which uh, dissociates which ionizes and one unit of charge in the gas this charged particle now reaches anode which we can measure using this electrical current how much electrical current is flowing through that that kind of uh, corresponds to how much of the photons are received in the cavity. So we have this let us say some high energy photon comes in and this knocks down the gas particles ionizes the gas. So this is high energy photon. or the radiation. So this is how these gas chambers actually work and they register a measurement from primary ions. Primary ions means the how many photons are received those are the primary ions which when they convert it into the ionized gas that is called the primary ions. So let us say 100 photon comes in and they give rise to 100 charged particles in, in this cavity. So those 100 are called the primary ions and this setup registers only that because those 100 charged particles will reach to anode and cathode and give rise to current which is proportional to uh, 100 uh, photons. So that is why it registers a measurement from primary ions. Next is because it registers only from the primary ions the measurement that the detector records is directly proportional to the number of ions or pairs created. So thus the measurement that the detector records is directly proportional to the number of ion pairs created. This is particularly useful 
एज ए मेजर ऑफ एब्जॉर्ब डोज ओवर टाइम absorbed dose over time they are also valuable for the measurement of high energy gamma ray so we have this ionization chamber where the measurement is being done only from the primary ion so the number of photons received they convert into the ion pairs and which is the measurement is going to be done so because of this we can say this measures the absolute number of photons how much photons are received based on that our, our output reading uh, is there so this kind of measurement is useful for it uh, for a longer time for example we want to measure for in let's say 1 hour how much of radiation is being received so this kind of measurement can be done using ionization chamber so we because the the charge developed is directly proportional to how many photons are received so we can use this as a uh, as a measurement for absorbed dose how much of dose is actually absorbed by the gas over a period of time so we take let's say one hour or one day or uh, a finite amount of time in that finite amount of time how many photons or how many energetic particles are received and absorbed by the gas so this is what the measurement is and they are also valuable for high energy gamma rays that also ionizes the gas so for gamma ray detection this is also uh, used these ionization chamber so these are the uh, good points about ionization chambers however these chambers are not able to differentiate between different types of radiation for example one is the gamma radiation one is the x ray x ray radiation both are ionization radiation but when the the rays come in and they ionize the gas we cannot detect by ionization chamber whether it is because of the gamma rays or because of the x rays so this that detection is not possible using ionization chambers so we have ion chambers are unable to discriminate between different types of radiation meaning they cannot be used for spectroscope
and they are also widely used in laboratories to establish reference standards for calibration and sometime they are little expensive than other kind of detectors so here these ion chambers they are not able to discriminate between different kind of radiation as we say it cannot differentiate whether the ionization is happening because of the x rays or because of the gamma rays so if it cannot discriminate between different type of radiation we cannot use it for spectroscopy spectroscopy is something where we detect what kind of radiations are coming in so this kind of ionization chambers are not suitable for the spectroscopy spectroscopy uh, measurements they are widely used in laboratories because we measure the absolute number of photons how many photons are coming in which are being absorbed by the gas so they are very much used in reference standards to met, to calibrate the instruments how many photons are actually received so for calibration of those instruments these ion chambers are very much used and depending upon the size if we want these kind of detectors in a bigger size then the cost actually goes up so they are little expensive than other kind of detectors so this is the first type of ionization chamber let's discuss the second type so the second type is proportional counter So proportional counters are also gas filled detectors and the configuration uh, of these detectors is similar to what we just saw in the last slide we have a cavity which is filled with the gas and we apply we have two electrodes in that cavity where we apply the the voltage so the proportional chamber differ from that is in proportional chamber we apply a little higher voltage uh, in in anode and cathode so that when a gas ionizes these ionized particles they further give rise to something called avalanche but this avalanche is not a complete avalanche it's kind of a discrete avalanche we don't apply so high voltage so that it goes purely into avalanche region we apply the voltage only in certain range where the avalanche happens but it does not happen very high so it's kind of a discrete avalanche we call and when a high energy photon comes in this is absorbed by the gas it creates charged particle this charged particle start gaining energy from this high electric field or the high voltage what we apply here it acquires that and en that energy and convert a avalanche which is limited in nature or we can say discrete avalanche so we have these proportional counters which operate at a slightly higher voltage
selected such that discrete avalanches are generated. Each ion pair produces a single avalanche so that an output current pulse is generated which is proportional to the energy deposited by the radiation. This is in the proportional counting region. So here in proportional counter, we apply a little higher voltage so that these discrete avalanche comes into picture, they get generated and each ion pair produces single avalanche so that an output current pulse is generated because of this avalanche, because avalanche will suddenly release certain amount of charges which appear to be a pulse at the output if we measure in the electrical uh, signal. So this is this voltage is chosen so that the entire counter or the detector work in proportional counting region. It, it means the avalanche are generated only uh, in the dis discrete nature. Now if we have radiation which is coming in, we can differentiate between the radiations because whether it is a gamma ray whether it is a uh, kind of X-ray radiation because these radiations are differ in terms of energy, how much, how much is the energy of these charged particles or the photon coming in. So a high energy photon will give rise to a more stronger aval discrete avalanche and a lesser energy will give something like a lesser uh, kind of avalanche. So this counter, proportional counter we can use for a certain amount of spectroscopy which we cannot do in the earlier case where it was only measuring the amount of radiation not able to di differentiate. Proportional counter however we can differentiate between the different types of radiation as well. So the advantage are
the ability to measure energy of radiation and provide spectrographic information discriminate between alpha and beta particles alpha and beta particles and the other advantage is the large area detectors can also be constructed So in this type of detectors, for example, if we see the gas filled cavity where we have this gas filled in and we have the electrodes there. So for example, this is the one electrode which is let's say anode and in this gas filled cavity, this is the complete cavity full of gas a high energy ray is coming like this so it ionizes the gas for example let's say this is the ionization is being happening here this charged particle come this way and this is the avalanche region these avalanche will give rise to multiple charged particles something like this one charged particle give rise to multiple charged particles so this is one avalanche let's say second it is ionizing here so this charged particle comes here and then start ionizing here one to two two to four and something like that this is one avalanche and this is let's say the third avalanche which is happening here so this is let's say one, one avalanche two and three so here in this figure we can see that a high energy wave high energy electromagnetic wave is coming in this red direction this that is high energy ionization so this high energy particle is coming in this direction and the gas which is filled in this cavity that get ionized after ionization this charged particle move towards the anode but it does not 
give rise to avalanche till the point it avalanche it reaches the avalanche region and the avalanche is happening only in this avalanche region which is enough only for a discrete avalanche is not like complete avalanche effect it's a controlled avalanche effect and we call it let's say the discrete avalanche happening and here we see one two three these are based on the how many charge how many charged particles are created by ionization particle so this is how this proportional counter works the uh, disadvantage of this kind of uh, charge proportional counter is these anode wires are a little bit de delicate and they lose efficiency uh, in long term uh, use of these proportional counter so the disadvantage are that anode wires are delicate and can lose some efficiency in detectors due to deposition so this is second type of counter which is proportional counter now we are measuring how much of charge is actually received in the cavity and which is and we are generating a controlled avalanche by applying a slightly higher voltage the voltage is not very high so that the complete avalanche is not happening the avalanche is happening only in a small region which is proportional to how many charged charge particles are actually generated by ionization particles so this is proportional counter the third one is the gm counter or geyser counter we say in that geyser counter we apply much higher voltage compared to the proportional counter so the structure of gm counter or the geyser counter is exactly same only the difference is the voltage we apply if we apply a very high voltage the generated charge particle immediately creates a avalanche a sea of uh, charged particles and this avalanche is generated throughout the gas and we cannot detect how many ionization particles are received because even a single ionization particle can create this avalanche because of very high applied electric field or the voltage so that kind of measurement is used to detect for example single photon kind of detector if we want to measure whether a photon is coming or not some radiation is there or not we can use those gm counter if a single even a single photon comes in that ionizes the gas immediately we see a avalanche of charged particles and immediately we see a very high value of current flowing into these electric anode and cathode so these gm counters are used as a single photon detectors so let's discuss those gm counter or sometime call, called called geyser muller or simply the geyser counter so they work on higher voltage
this voltage is selected such that each ion pair creates an avalanche but by the emission of uv photons multiple avalanches are created which said along the anode wire. And the, at the gas volume ionizes from as little as single ion ion pair event so if we see the the cavity view just like we saw last slide we have this anode which is there in the gas filled cavity and a high energy wave comes in and even a single event occurs of ionization let's say this is the single event which occurs in the gas cavity this single event give rise to the ionize the avalanche which is happening from 1 to 2 2 to 4 and 4 to 8 something like this and in between because of this very high applied field in the in the cavity this also create other avalanche as well so let's say this particle which gains sufficiently high energy it creates its own avalanche separate from this first avalanche so everywhere these avalanches are happening
these can also create zone available. So at the end we get multiple avalanche happening in the cavity and that happens because we have applied a higher voltage between anode and cathode. This high voltage creates a very high electric field in the gas region and these charged particles they accelerate because of this high electric field and they gain energy from this high electric field when they acquire enough energy to knock down other gas particles as well. So they start their own avalanche as well. So one even a one photon which is received from ionization particles, a single photon can give rise to multiple avalanche and in an instant whole gas is getting ionized because of a single photon which is received. So this kind of counter is used to detect whether a radiation is there or not because even a single photon comes in, this geyser counter immediately ionizes all the gas and we receive a very strong pulse in the output, the current pulse because of these so many charges. So we, the current pulse produced by the ionizing events are passed to electronics which can generate which can derive the count rate or radiation dose. The advantage of these GM counters are they are cheap and very robust devices. The disadvantage is it cannot measure the amount the energy of radiation. So again there is no spectroscopic information. Hence, no spectroscopic information. So, this this is the GM counter where we have. A instant avalanche happening even if a, char a single charged particle comes in the whole chamber of gas is actually ionized because of the avalanche. The advantage is, is they are very cheap and robust devices but the problem is we cannot detect 
between different kind of radiation because any of the charged particle if it is coming from gamma ray or x ray or from any of the radi or any of the ionizing radiation a single radi ionization is creating an avalanche and after that we cannot detect whether it was this avalanche was generated by a gamma ray photon or a x ray photon so this is the problem that we do not have any spectroscopic information from these gm counters so these are this is the third type of gas field detectors which is the gm counter if we classify based on this applied electric field or applied voltage then we have these three kind of radiation detectors which is gas field if we want to draw a graph based on the ion pair charge collection so let's say we have this graph where on the x axis we have the voltage applied and on the y axis we have rate of charge collected so in the first region where the voltage applied is less let's say this is the lower region where we apply lower voltage and this region is where we apply a higher voltage so the first one is the ion chamber re region so this is the region where this ion chamber region detector works in medium applied voltage there is the proportional counting region and when the applied voltage is very high then we have a geyser region where we get sudden avalanche so this graph shows when we increase the voltage the first lower voltage is ion chamber region where the rate of charge collected is kind of constant and we cannot differentiate between the radiation this is ion chamber radiation then we have a linearly increasing graph with the voltage and uh, rate of charge actually collected is proportional to how much voltage we apply this is the region for proportional region where we can detect whether which kind of radiation is coming into the gas cavity the third is the higher voltage which is the geyser region or gm counter works there again the instant avalanche comes in and we do not have any spectroscopic information we cannot detect whether the radiation is of this type of that or that type but in gm counter even a single photon we can detect very easily which shows that whether radiation is present or not present so these are the three types of gas field detectors which we use for radiation detecting so that is all for today thank you mm -hmm.